here, but I thought I'd read this for you. Why the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is very important. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12. It says there, Now if Christ is preached that He has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. In other words, they don't have hope for our future, right? If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. Now, when, when Paul wrote this letter, Paul, to the Corinthians, because there are some people who um, went to Corinth and say, um, and teaching people that Jesus did not rise from the dead. And so he says, no. If that's the case, then we're in trouble, Christians, right? You understand that? Now, let me prove to you this morning that Jesus rose from the dead. Amen? Amen. So turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 24. Every year, folks, we uh, study this passage, and which I love it, because that should remind us every year that uh, our faith is not in futile or futile. Do you understand that, folks? Are you with me? And here we go. Luke chapter 24. But you know what? Before I go to Luke chapter 24, Let's go back a little bit to what happened on Friday, Good Friday, 2,000 years ago. Okay, when Jesus died on the cross. Are you with me? Can I go back a little bit in Luke chapter 23, verse 50? It says there, Now behold, there was a man named Joseph, a council member, a good and just man. He had not consented to their decision and deed. He was from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who himself was also waiting for the kingdom of God. So this, this day, folks, it was Friday at this point. Now, we were introduced to a man named Joseph, a council member. In other words, he was a member of the Sanhedrin. Now, Sanhedrin is the Jewish council or the Jewish government. Are you with me? Now, now, because um, back then, yes, the, the Jews, they were under the Roman Empire. But under the Roman, though, even, even though they were under the Roman Empire, they had their own government. And that is the Jewish Jewish council, the Sanhedrin, and the Sanhedrin was consist of 70 men, 70 men, Pharisees, Sadducees, and also the head is the high priest. Are you with me on that one? And so Joseph was part of that Sanhedrin, and it says here in verse 51, he had not consented to their decision and deed. Now, what is their decision? That the, the decision is to crucify Jesus. In other words, though the majority voted that Jesus should be crucified, but Joseph, in other words, says no. And I believe even Nicodemus says he didn't vote yes on that part. Do you are you with me, folks? And so it says here, this man in verse 52 went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Now Pilate was the governor of the, the land. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in a tomb that was hewn out of the rock where no one had ever lain before. 
That day was the preparation day, and the Sabbath drew near. Now that day, so we were given a time, Bible students. That day was the preparation day, and the Sabbath drew near. So what time did Jesus died? 3 p.m. Friday, right? Now, so this event here, the one that I just read to you, the Acts of Joseph of Arimathea, was between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. How do I know that? Okay, because Friday, 6 p.m. is the Sabbath day, or the Sabbath day will start to Saturday, 6 p.m. Are you with me? So because the Jew, the, their, their time is different from our time. Our day starts what? 12 midnight. Come on now. Are you with me? For our first time visitors, normally they're not like this, alright? So, our day starts what? 12 midnight. That's where we consider, that's why our new year, we celebrate on what? December 31st. 11, 15, 9, and 59 seconds, and then when that hit stop, when that second stop here, if you're Filipino, you throw your five crackers. If you're a short Filipino, you jump, right? That's what they say. So, we understand. And so that the day starts different. 6 p.m., sundown to sundown, but us is midnight. And so this time here is between 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. because Sabbath is drawing near. Are you with me? Just a little bit All right. Now, check this out. And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after. And they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils. And they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. See? 6 p.m. So between 3 to 6, Joseph did this. He asked for the body of our Lord. And according to John, he did not do this by himself. He was with Nicodemus. And so while they were asking for the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the week when, when they got the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, I should say, the women followed the, where, where they lay Jesus. But, you know, they don't have enough time to embalm the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what they did is just, they make sure that they prepared all the spices, the fragrant oils for embalming. Are you with me, folks? Now, something happened between verse 56 and verse 1 of chapter 24 and it was recorded in Matthew chapter 27 verse 62. Can I go there? Please. Uh, in Matthew chapter 27 verse 62 through 66 it says there, on the next day, that is the Sabbath day. So the next day would be what? Saturday. But in their time, their Saturday starts what? It could be Friday past after 6 p.m. That's their Saturday. Are you with me? Amen. Right? Or do you want me to explain to you again about the time? All right. So, on the next day, the Sabbath day, which followed the day of the preparation day, that is Friday, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember, while he was still alive, how that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise. Now, notice, the Pharisees and the chief priests remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Are you? Right? They knew and recalled what Jesus said about His resurrection. But you know where I have a problem? I don't have a problem with that. Where I have a problem is this, that his own disciples did not even remember his words about rising from the dead. Right? And, 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 and look at this. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people he has risen from the dead. 
but the last deception will be worse than the first. And Pilate said to them, You have a guard. Go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. So who did that part? The chief priests and the Pharisees. They have their own guard. So, so they brought a Roman guard and they sealed the tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they have what? Guards on the mouth of the tomb, if you will. But there's no mouth at this point because it was covered with a big rock. Do you understand that? Now, why, why I love to say that post? Now, because the enemies of the gospel, they say Jesus' body was not resurrected. His disciples took it. Now we know that's not true. Because the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, they're the one who provided a guard for the tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you understand that? And so, they're, they're the deception, if you would, that they're trying to, to, uh, to deceive people about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is not valid anymore. The fact is just, it's just this. Jesus is alive. Amen. Jesus is alive. And He resurrected for us. And that's why we celebrate today the resurrection day. Amen? Now, can I go back now to Luke chapter 24, verse 1. So, we talk about what happened Friday. We talk about what happened Saturday. So, Saturday, Jesus was inside the tomb, covered with a big rock, with guards, right? Now, on the first day of the week, that is Sunday. Now, our first day of the week is what? Monday. Not the Jews. The Jews, the first day of the week is Sunday. Very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened. As they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Wow! The Gospel of Mark tells us that these women were worried about how to open the tomb. Remember, they were on their way to the tomb and they kind of discussing one another with the spices and the alms for embalming, maybe probably Hey, Sister Joanna and Sister Mary, how can you roll up, roll that that rock? You know, because it's big, it's huge, and we don't have Peter with us, John, and all the, the disciples of our Lord. They're they're having this conversation on the road, right now. Oh, now they all serve, folks. Now something happened inside the tomb, right? Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Oh, I love that. In shining garments. Do you remember the experience of Moses on Mount Sinai? Do you remember that? When he received the Ten Commandments from, our, from the Lord God Almighty, and then he came down from Mount Sinai and the people came and even looked at him because he was what? Glowing. He's shining, folks. There's something about that for us, brothers and sisters, you know, that even in the scriptures, let me tell you this, that these two angels, because according to the other gospel, these two men here were angels. They have just seen the glorified body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, because they enjoy His glory, guess what? They are shining also. Amen? There is something about that when a person or an angel come to the presence of the Almighty God. They glow. They glow. 
I, I really do believe that, folks. Now, that is why when I see a Christian that I know, he or she's a Christian who looked like a <laughs> rotten avocado. And I just kind of know what happened. What happened to you, brother? What happened to you, sister? You know what that tells me, at least for me, for me, folks, is this. I felt like you've been away with the Lord. You haven't been fellowshipping with the Lord. The, folks, if we have a constant fellowship with the Lord, there is some glow to us. Amen. Do you believe that? You know, sometimes people, you don't even have to ask them if they're Christian or not, but you can tell in their countenance. Why just their countenance? I can tell. You have Jesus in your heart. Amen? You agree with me on that? Amen. Next time you see Christians like this, whatever. Folks, Christians, listen to me on this. If we have a constant fellowship with our Lord Jesus Christ, if we have a constant fellowship with God, whatever we go through in life for some reason, it doesn't fade us. Amen? amen. Come on. Can I hear anything on that? Amen. Amen. If we have a constant fellowship with God and with our Lord Jesus Christ, whatever we go through in life, whether we or whether we lose our job or problem with our children, problem with our relationship at home or whatever, there it doesn't fade us because Jesus is in us. Amen. Amen. We can we can say because my Lord will take care of my problem. Amen. The things that I can do, I just give it to God. As a matter of fact, folks, I want to take that back. Even the things that I can manage, I go, Lord, can you still handle it for me? Amen. That is awesome, folks. Because sometimes we say, oh, we try our best and we give the rest to God. Oh, I would say give everything to God. Give everything to God. <laughs> you know? Then you won't need... A Avino does positively radiant moisturizer. Oh, you will glow. By the way, the reason I know Avino positively moisturizer, I use that every day. <laughs> I'm not trying to help God about the glow, extra glow that I need. But my skin is a little bit dry here in the desert. But do you get the message, brothers and sisters? Oh, if we're away. If we're away from God, folks, our countenance will tell us that. Amen. Now look at this, verse 5. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you see the living among the dead? I love that. So the women, they're like terrified. Oh, the body of our Lord. Is gone. But the other gospel it says there that you can see the the uh, what do you call that the cloth that they use for Jesus when they wrap him like a mummy. You know that's how they embalm like that. You know it's not like you remove it like this. It's like a cocoon. It's the shape of a man still, but there's no body inside. Now the words Jesus just. Stop. I can't wait for that body, folks. That's why you remember when, when when the disciples they were in the upper room, Jesus just showed up and just walked through the wall. Hey, hey guys, Ooh, Lord, don't do that to me. You know, I'm not good at that part yet. You know. But you know what I mean? It's just like wow. So, so it says they said to the women, Why do you sleep when living among the dead? Here's the best news ever, folks. Let me tell you this. I have a lot of... What, how can I say this? There's a lot of Bible verses that I really love. But this one here, for me, folks, is one of the best. When the angels said to the women in verse 6, He is not here, but it's recent. Hallelujah. Folks, if this verse is not here, guess what? We're in trouble. Like what 
the Apostle Paul says, then your faith is futile or futile. Your faith is in vain. Then those who perish, those who died with Jesus, in Jesus, they don't have no hope. But here's the good news right there. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how He spoke to you when He was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the, the third day rise again. And they remembered His words. Finally, they got it, right? But did you know, the Pharisees and the chief priests, they knew it already. That's why on Saturday, they said to Pilate, hey, give us some guards, you know. We want to protect the tomb. We don't want these disciples of Him will take that body, okay? And, and they say, oh, He resurrected. No, guess what? That issue is no more. Because we know there's God, there's, there's a big rock, all right? But now, but let me tell you, but there's also empty tomb. Hallelujah. That's the difference, folks. Other religions, their gods are man-made God. Can I hear an amen to that? Yeah, please, right? Their gods is just, some of them are just elephants, you know. Some cows. I mean, those. Some, their gods, whatever, they're just human. But you go to their tomb, Ah, their bones still there. Not our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry if I sound like sarcastic right here, but I'm just so excited on that one. But because our Lord's tomb is empty. He's alive. And guess what? He's coming back. And I think he's coming back soon. Hallelujah. I think you wait on that thing. And I can't wait, folks. I can't wait. Alright? So notice again. And they remember His words. Now listen to me, Bible students. Listen to me on this. When the circumstances gives us doubt, let me tell you this, then we need to go back to His words. We need to go back to His words. How many times, folks, that we doubt ourselves? Amen? Or is just me? How many times I doubt my <clears throat> my you know, circumstances, you know? All right, but you know what? The best time, the best thing to do, I should say, is to go back to His word. You know when there's when 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 doubt is creeping in, when when doubt is troubling us, that is the time for us to go back to His word. Perhaps the enemy is whispering something to you in, for these past few weeks, months, maybe years, days, maybe a minute right now, or a few seconds right now. You need to go back to the Word of God. You need to go back to the Word. The Word of God is very important in us. Amen? Amen. Now look at verse 9. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles. So, so these women, they, told, they reported to the uh, disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ what happened there. Should be a good news, right? Should be a good news. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. Oh my, <laughs> are we in trouble? You know, when I, when I read this, when I read this post, let me tell you this. I kind of, kind of want to rebuke the, the, the disciples right here. When it says, and they did not believe them. The disciples did not believe the women. And according to the Bible, their words seem to them like idle tales, like a myth or something. What are you talking about? Kind of like that. 
I want to rebuke the disciples at this point, but then I realize most of the time I'm just like them. I'm too realist sometimes, folks. Yes, sometimes I'm too realist. Then I need to go back then to God. All things are possible. Then I look at this and I can go, wow. Then if I if I doubt that again, then I need to go back to the word of God. To the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes folks, when I'm kind of when I get to that point, and I don't know about you, I'm pretty sure some of you here, or per perhaps all of us here are guilty of that. Ah, that's not possible. Because that's not realistic. Kind of like that. Amen. Have you experienced that? And then you know what, folks? There are some times that we need to be realistic, amen? Right? But there are times that where I don't know what to do, I then I just go back to the Word of God. Lord, can you do this? Oh, yes. Lord, can you do that? Oh, yes. But I, I remember uh, last Friday on our practice for worship, Shannon shared uh, the, the story of Gideon when he fought 132 or 35,000 men with his army of 300. And I'm like, if I'm realistic, I would go, no match. The odds are so great against the Israelites. Right? Amen? Right? Come on. Right? 300 against, even if I don't have the exact number, let's say just 100,000 soldiers. Against 300. Woo. That doesn't sound right, you know. Who's going to win? And I remember that story. I go, I remember Gideon have, if I'm not mistaken, 22,000 soldiers with him. And God says, Wow, that's your soldiers? God says to him, Oh, yeah. Then Gideon says, Oh, this is only what I can gather, Lord, you know. Oh no, the God went, you know what God told him? They're too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. That is the time I would like to pray to God and say, Lord, you know how to count. You know. And you know what? Folks, if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. There's a time that it would be realistic. There's a time that God wanted us to trust Him in that circumstances. And so, and their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Now, folks, this is where I want to teach you about resurrection. How do you know that Jesus rose from the dead? How do you know that? If, if let's say there's an unbeliever right now and ask you about the resurrection, will you be able to defend the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ? I'm asking you that. Okay? Now, will you be able to to answer the question about the resurrection? Why do we Christians believe in resurrection? You know why? Well, you might want to take note of this now, folks. Number one is this. So I'll teach you how to answer that. Number one is this. Why do we Christians believe in resurrection? Because the Old Testament prophesied that the Messiah would rise from the dead. Where would that be? Psalm 16, verse 10. It says, For you will not leave my soul in show, that is the grave, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. That's how, number one, how are you going to answer that? Number two, why do we Christians believe 
in resurrection. Number two, because the scriptures or the Bible says so. All of the four Gospels, that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, folks, all of the four Gospels have an account of Jesus' resurrection. So, those are proof, right? Number three, if, 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 if you're here, if you have been asked about this question and you still not sound con convincing to that person, let's say, who asked you this question, I think the third one will make them somehow think, okay? Number three is this. Why do we Christians believe in resurrection? Because there were witnesses. There were witnesses. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 7. It says, For I deliver to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and, had, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, according to the scriptures and that he was seen by seven that is Peter then by the twelve after that he was seen by over check this out five hundred brethren at once of whom the greater part remain to the present but some have fallen asleep so in other words when Paul wrote first Corinthians some of those 500 witnesses who have seen Jesus resurrect from the dead, guess what? They are still alive. Are you with me? So the third one, once again, because there were witnesses. Now the question is this. The question is, how do we know that their testimonies are true? Now, listen to me on this one. There were the agonizing deaths that the early Christians were willing to suffer in order to testify that Jesus was alive. So, the best explanation for their boldness and willingness to die was that they really did see Jesus alive after His crucifixion. Is that very clear to you folks? Folks, listen to me. Nobody willingly and knowingly dies for a lie. You understand that? And so that is convincing, right? Now, the last one is this. How do we, or why do we Christians believe in resurrection? Because of our personal testimony, we know that Jesus is alive. All of us here, Christians, this is only for Christians, okay? You know, when we open our heart to Jesus and receive Him as our Lord and Savior, isn't it true, folks? There's change in our lives. That change in our life. No one can take that away from us. And that tells you and me that Jesus is alive. Amen? Amen. If there's no change then, <laughs> then you might say, well, maybe He's not alive. But there's change. It's not just change. There's changes in our life from inside out. Amen? Now, questions also that I want to answer is this. Why the resurrection is very important to every believer? Why the resurrection is very important to every believer? Number one is this. The resurrection proves that Jesus is the Son of God. The resurrection proves that Jesus is the Son of God. Look at John chapter 10, verse 17 
and 18. It says there, Therefore, my Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Is that amazing, folks? So the resurrection proves that Jesus is the Son of God. Number two is this. Why the resurrection is very important to every believers? It attests to the truth of the Scripture. It attests to the truth of the Scripture. And we have read that in Psalm 60, verse 10. Now, the last two applications speaks of our glorious hope. Number four, why the resurrection is very important to every believer. Because it, uh, sorry, because it assures us of our own future resurrection when we die. Again, it assures us of our own future resurrection when we die. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Listen to the words of the Apostle Paul. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. You see? Now the other who have no hope here that he's talking about, the unbelievers who died without Jesus. Alright? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with Him those who sleep in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's amazing. Right? If you have a loved one who died in Jesus, guess what? They will resurrect also. Hallelujah. Amen? Now, if you have a loved ones who have, on the other hand, I should say, if you have a loved ones who died without Jesus in their heart, well, they perish. They perish, folks. Now, so the fourth one is this. Why the resurrection is very important to every believer. It is the assurance of our future inheritance. It is the assurance of our future inheritance. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, it says, it says that, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Oh my. And so brothers and sisters, that is why the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is very important. And I believe this. That is why every year at least we should have a sermon about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we are doing today. Especially in celebrating that particular day. Hallelujah. Amen. So brothers and sisters, that is your future in Christ Jesus. Look at our future in Christ Jesus. We have everlasting life. We have hope. Not like the others who rejected Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They will perish, folks. But, think with me right now. If you have a choice right now, right now, this day, on the resurrection day, if you have a choice right now, Let's say, this choice is for your future, okay? Would you rather have eternal life or eternal punishment? 
you have a choice. Turn them back. I hope so. I mean, there's only one who answered that question. You know, eternal life, right? And to have an eternal life is just and just to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Would that be hard? You know? Would that be hard? Or you just say, nah, I won't do that. I'll wait. I'll wait. Well, when are you going to do that? Well, I don't know. I'll take my time. Well, let me tell you some bad news, okay? It's bad news right here, folks. If you take your time, let's say, I don't want to do that, Pastor. I don't want to do that in this church, okay? Maybe on the other church, or maybe Sunday, maybe tomorrow. Well, tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Amen. Amen. Folks, that's just the truth. You can die today. You might not even see tomorrow. So why waste that time? Time is very important. That simple time of maybe rejecting Jesus. If you reject Jesus, folks, eternal punishment. If you receive Him as your Lord and Savior, eternal life. Today is the day for you, for all of us. Amen. Will you all please stand? Thank you.